European cars have yellow turn signals. American cars blink red. In the European Union, CO2 emission standards for cars are stricter than in the US, but American safety requirements are more rigorous. The differences are a stumbling block for auto manufacturers. They'd be the big winners of the planned transatlantic free trade zone. Take Ford, the largest American company in Germany. Bernhard Matters, CEO of Ford in Germany, is an avid supporter of a free trade agreement. It would benefit his company. First, it would eliminate import duties, removing a burden of about a billion euros a year. Second, technical standardization. We could develop and produce a single product, reducing complexity and lowering costs. And third, in the area of testing and permits. One testing procedure and one permit procedure would save a lot of money. It would reduce development times and thus benefit consumers. One car with the same parts for the whole global market. Ford's Focus is already sold around the world. But the Mustang is available only in the United States. Now a special version of it is to arrive on European shores. In the opposite direction, Ford wants to build new compact car engines in the EU and export them to the US. That would create jobs in Europe. With the free trade agreement, economic growth would take off because opportunities for companies would grow in Europe and the United States. German companies could compete in the U.S. for additional market shares there, and successful U.S. companies could compete here and have additional success. The agreement would create the world's largest free trade zone with more than 800 million people, but it would affect more more than duties and products. European consumer protection standards and labor law might be harmonized with those of the United States. The Metal Workers and Auto Industry Union, IG Metall, and its chairman, Detlef Wetzel, oppose the free trade agreement. We think the risks are much greater. We fear that the planned agreement on protecting investments enables investors to get around state measures, social policy and consumer rights. They could even sue the taxpayers if their expectations for profits are not fulfilled. We fear that standards will be caught in a race to the bottom. For example, investors might go to court to challenge minimum wage laws and laws protecting employees against firings, which were achieved at great effort in Europe. But the public isn't even hearing what's really being discussed in Brussels. We need transparency here. The negotiators on both sides should state their goals. The democratic public has to be able to take part and see what's going on, develop an opinion and debate with the negotiators. But neither the American nor the European negotiators want that. It's just not true that the free trade agreement aims to limit workers' rights. The employee rights existing in Germany will be maintained. Proponents say the trade agreement will boost the EU economy by half a percent, and that would take a decade. The opponents doubt this prediction. We don't make policy in Germany and Europe for the benefit of three companies. It's not legitimate. We don't need policies that benefit a few while disadvantaging many. If there are obstacles to trade, like import duties, they can be discussed bilaterally and differently organized without such an agreement. To stimulate trade and the economy, but at what price? Negotiations will continue at least through 2015. For Europe, a lot is at stake. <laughs>